In modern times, one of the most difficult issues leaders are faced with is helping those who struggle with mental health. No longer can we simply encourage a good measure of scripture study and prayer and expect everyone's life to stabilize. This is why leading saints felt it was so important to organize the Mentally Healthy Saints Library. There, one can find 25 plus presentations all about ministering to those who struggle with mental health. We cover topics like depression, anxiety, scrupulosity, or OCD. We even cover how to effectively refer individuals to professional therapists and make sure they are getting the help they need. This and so much more. If you'd like to review all of these sessions, we would love to have you do so at no cost. You can visit leadingsaints.org 14 and get access to the full library for 14 days. You'll also receive access to all our virtual libraries where we cover additional leadership related topics. So click the link in the show notes or simply visit leadingsaints.org 14. Hey, welcome to the Leading Saints podcast. Now, for many of you that are brand new uh, to Leading Saints, it's important that you know that Leading Saints is a nonprofit organization, 501c3, dedicated to helping Latter-day Saints be better prepared to lead. And we do that through content creation. We get so much positive feedback on the podcast, our virtual conferences, the articles on our website. You definitely got to check it out at leadingsaints.org. And on their homepage at leadingsaints.org, you can actually find the top six most downloaded episodes to the podcast. So if you're new, like the content, want to jump in to some of our most popular episodes, head there after you listen to this episode. Today, I get to welcome back uh, John Eldridge to the Leading Saints podcast. Thanks for thanks for connecting again, John. Yeah, it's good to see you again, Kurt. Thanks. Yeah. Great, yeah, to, you know, great to be back. You know, our last interview, I guess it's been a couple of years, uh, at least it feels that way since we connected. It's been listening to 40,000 plus individuals and, and I've get, gotten a lot of positive feedback of like, wow, you got John Eldridge on the podcast, like who would have thought? And uh, so you just continue to bless lives and, wow. and uh, we appreciate that. Oh, I'm very honored. Thank you. That's really, that's really neat. Yeah, I think we were talking right before the pandemic last time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, we're, or we were just getting into it, uh, yes. you know, where in that book, which the book we talked about last time was get your life back everyday practices for a world gone, uh, gone uh, mad. And that, uh, yes. you know, that was the book we needed at the time. You yes, know? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so yeah, well, thanks I, for, thanks for having me back. Yeah, for sure. So I'm just curious, like just get a general update of the things happening at wild at heart. You know, I'm always, I, I, I subscribe you know, I'm on the app a lot. You, I, whether you know it or not, you helped me build a fence this spring as I, <laughs> as I listen to different uh, sessions and whatnot. But what's going on with your, your boot camps, with your Wild Heart Ministries and, and the podcast or anything like that? Yeah, thank you. Well, it's great to be back to live events. It, it's yeah. always been kind of the core of what we love to do. So yeah, we're, um, our captivating events for women, our Wild at Heart events for men, we're back doing those live after a couple of years. Um, we did the first round last fall, mm. uh, and it was it was great. Yeah, yeah, it was great to be back. And live events this spring, we've got some one in August, you know, so it just feels good to be getting our cadence again, kind of getting right. our, our legs back. But the podcast and the yeah, the reach has gone all over the world. It's just really beautiful. Here's a fun little story. So Wild at Heart is the, and I'm not, this isn't bragging. I'll just tell you a fun story. It's the <laughs> sure. number one uh, Christian book in Slovakia. Really? And it wow. is published by a Catholic monastery. I just love that. Holy cow. Yes. I'm like, okay, let's go. You know, we're <laughs> yeah. reaching, we're reaching all these wonderful people all around the world. Yeah. Do, do you know off the top of your head how many languages Wild Heart's in now? Oh, I don't. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. and Slovakia is, Slovakian it, is one of them, I guess. It's one of them. And Czech and yeah, Russian, Chinese. Yeah. All, all over. Ukraine. Yeah. It's been strong in Ukraine. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, that's cool to hear. And so you recently released a book, uh, Resilient, uh, Restoring the Weary Soul in the in These Turbulent Times. And this is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it felt like sort of a, a follow-up to that Get Your Life Back book. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost part two 
um, because we didn't know when we when we published Get Your Life Back that this two year pandemic was going to roll through and and all those practices of how to care for your soul and and maintain you know well being and uh, connection with God was really timely, as you said. It 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 helped a lot of folks through that. Now we're in the after effects. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's like a, when you're in a car accident. You know, you have the adrenaline to like rally. And you can do the police report and you can, you know, get your car towed away and everything's okay. But then it's like months later that you, you're like, why do I keep having these headaches? Mm. Why does my back feel terrible? So there's the event and there's the after effects. And we're now in the after effects of the pandemic and the politics and all that, the high octane, everything and the economy. And so it felt like another word another book was really timely to, to people saying now what do we do how do yeah. we re- how do we recover cuz folks have really uh they're a little weary yeah yeah to say the least right <laughs> and and with that and the concept of the after effects like i cuz what i'm sensing and i see this in in different contexts and friends and connections i have where some people they they sort you know resort to their faith and and relying on Jesus. And, you know, hopefully that's where we hope they, they go and they find strength and, and others sort of go there. And it almost as if like they thought, oh, you know, that was great to talk about in the good times and whatnot, but I don't know how to lean on, on Jesus during these times or, or whatnot. And so then they're, they're just grasping at anything. And I, I see some individuals sort of almost abandon sort of the traditional Christian faith and they're maybe, you know, grasping onto more spiritual aspects or traditions that maybe don't have Jesus in them or they're not, you know, a Christian tradition, but they're just like grasping at things. Is that fair to say? Yeah. You, you actually jump straight to the epicenter of my concern hmm. right here at the, at the start of the conversation. Awesome. Um, that's my real concern because what we're seeing in our, uh, I've been a therapist for about 30 years. What we're seeing in our clients, what we're seeing in our own staff, what we're seeing in our, in our friends around the world in our weariness, everybody's just trying to get some relief. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be like a huge airline summer this summer. People are traveling, they're getting vacation, you know, they're, everybody's looking for joy, looking for some relief. But most of that has nothing to do with Jesus. And I, you know, I hope folks have a wonderful vacation, but it won't deal with the effects of what it's been like to live through these it's really been two years of global trauma. Yeah. Um, and, and I, so here's what's happening, Curtis. They, they feel disappointed with God. Yeah. And they're looking other places for relief. And I, we know some dear, dear people, e- even in our own world that are saying, you know, I, I just don't know about this God thing anymore. I, maybe, you know, I'll get back to it later. But they're walking away from the source of their rescue and and their recovery. Yeah. Yeah. And we we often see it in, you know, there's sort of almost cliche, you know, maybe sins that that people go to, like pornography, right? Like people aren't going to pornography for some sexual reason. It's It's a release. It's an escape, right? And so we sort of categorize it like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not, you know, going to porn. I'm not going to these, you know, these sinful that have all the stigma of sin with it. But just in the little ways where we sort of abandon Jesus mm-hmm. and we just sort of need a release. And, and you, I guess you, you frame this concept as, as sort of the Edens in our life. Maybe unpack that a little bit for us. Yeah, right. Okay. So we all remember Eden. You know, yeah. we're, we're from Eden. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and we long for it. It's those, it, it's that picture of Tahiti that makes you stop in the dentist's office. You know, you're like, <laughs> Oh, I wish, you know, it's the, it's the home cooking catalog with the beautiful dining table and everybody's <laughs> having the time of their life. And you look at that picture and you go, Oh, I wish, you know, we're made for that. We're, we're yeah. you're made for joy. You're made for that. But only as God brings it into our lives only as he provides. And so when we rush out to try and grasp those things, you know, almost as an alternative to our faith, because again, we, it's relief. We are looking for relief now. And this is classic trauma behavior. 
So let me let me name a few things. I think yeah, I, I think it. this will be fascinating for your listeners to just check the boxes here. Okay, so two years of global trauma, two years of high stress living, you know, working at home, educating the kids at home, all, just all the chaos, right? Um, we're on, we're off, we're masks, we're not, we're vaccines, we're you know, just all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now um, notice the mental fragmentation. You pick up your phone. You can't remember who it was you were going to text. <laughs> yeah. You you open email, and for the life of you, you can't remember why. Yeah. You walk from one room into another room, and you don't. You're like, what was I going to do in this room? I forget why. I, I forget why I opened the refrigerator. Okay. So there's mental fragmentation, mm-hmm. and then there is a loss of a sense of time. You're like, is it Thursday? Is it, is it still Wednesday? I kind of forget. Are we at the end of the month or we, it's that I don't really know where I am. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, and then it is the exhaustion. People have enough to get through the day, but then in the, in the evening, like, no, I'm not going to the gym. No, I'm not, (laughs) I'm not going to church. No, I'm not going to small group. Like I'm gassed. I got nothing left. People going to bed at like seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Okay, so then, then one last thing. The lack of grace for irritating people. <laughs> <laughs> like, I used to have a little. I, you know, the guy, yeah, in the, yeah. the guy in the grocery line that's got, you know, 20 items in his cart and he's in the 10 items or less line, you know, I could forgive that guy. Like, but now, like, instant emotions, ang- anger in traffic, frustration with people, like, we don't have margin left. And now everything I've just described, those are classic trauma symptoms. Hmm. Okay. It's, that's what it does to your brain. That's what it does to your body, your soul. And so that's why we're looking for relief. That's why people are just like, just give me some happiness, man. Get me to the beach, right? I just want to get to the lake. Just get me somewhere I can have fun. What I'm concerned about is that only our life in God, only our life in Jesus will actually replenish us. Yeah. Yeah. And and I almost think my mind goes to even the context of church where I, I see this in some church leaders where it's just like, let's just get back to we were with church. And but even in that in this effort of normalizing and getting back to the routine of church, we forget. And there's some people sort of in that in that brain fog at times thinking like, why did we go to church before? Like, what is it that I'm getting out of this? And some have sort of, you know, they, they were home for a while and now they're, they're staying home be, yes. because of that, you know? And so even we seek Eden in, in even the most, what feel like the most righteous context, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I think because this is for leaders, I think I would say one of the things we have to be very aware of is that y- your people now are, they are in the brain fog that we just described. They're in the exhaustion we just described. And so you, you literally have to teach less, Hmm. talk slower, allow pauses. Like honestly, people cannot take in the amount of content Mm -hmm. that we could take in. I have good friends who, who, they just don't read anymore. Okay, that's another trauma effect. Like the brain mm. just doesn't like it. It's, it requires too much concentration. So they'll do like audiobooks or they'll listen to you or podcasts and stuff. Mm-hmm. But just to be kind to the people that we are leading, to, to be aware that it, what we are describing, here's another way of describing it. Everyone's reserves are shot. Mm-hmm. Because to rally to something like two years of what we've been doing, you tap deep into your reserves. You're like, okay, we can make this work, right? We, we, can, we can still make this work. We can do church online. We can figure out, you know, uh, working from home. We'll do Zoom meetings. Yeah, we, it's the kids aren't in school, but we can make this work. We can make, you tap deep into your reserves. Well, everybody's reserves are shot. And so now we're just kind of living on what we have each day, but there isn't much left for the extra stuff. So I would just say... Um, it's really important for leaders to be aware of this, right? That this is the, this is the condition of, of humanity right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and my, I was, my mind went to a quote from, from your book of, you know, the, the, uh, the 10 virgins, how a lot of people, you know, they, they've run out of the oil they're, they're they've run out of God. Right. And they think, man, I thought the reserve was supposed to be here and now it's gone. And, and I, am I getting it at church? Am I getting it in my, you know, classic routines that seem to work for me, for me now? And so I appreciate that perspective of, of leadership. And so, I mean, what, what general advice would you give to maybe leaders who walk in on Sunday and like, okay, here I am. I'm going to, I need to provide something for these individuals. And, and like you said, maybe just slowing down or, or creating space and any other advice you give for leaders who are trying to create a place for people to find Jesus on Sunday. Yeah, that, that's such a beautiful question. So, yep, I think it does affect our programming. I do. I think that there needs to be more opportunities for quiet and for prayer. Mm-hmm. Because what people need is to get reconnected to God. They need to get reconnected to Jesus and the life that he provides. I am the branch. I am the vine. You are the branch, right? Like mm-hmm. that's that's the relationship. And the branch receives all its nourishment, all its strength, its resiliency from the vine. So in any program, whether it's a, a Sunday morning or a retreat or a conference or, you know, for all these young entrepreneurs out there, for your staff, like mm-hmm. you, you create more room for quiet. So here's a fun thing. Every day I, um, I'm in my office here. For, for this interview here in our offices every day at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monastery bells ring out. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, and it. And the whole staff realizes, oh, time to stop and pray. And wherever you are, it's not a group thing. It's just if you're in your office, if you're walking down the hall, literally you like stop in the hallway and we take 60 seconds. Right. And it, it's a way of recentering and it's quiet. Everybody goes quiet, no phone calls, no music, like everybody goes quiet. So allowing spaces like that, yeah, you, you design opportunities for quiet, for prayer, and for the presence of God to come in. Like you don't have to fill everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, and I appreciate that, that, that sometimes there's this pressure. I mean, I'm going back to the church context of like, all right, what announcements do we got? All right, let's get into the the sermon and let's do this and that. And even in our faith tradition, we know we have this during that first hour, we have this sacrament portion where it is quiet, but then we're, we're on to the next thing. And, and, and even saying, you know, in this time we may need some more quiet, maybe before a, you know, a class starts or, you know, something that we used to get right into it, just say, Hey, we're just going to take three minutes and just yes. breathe for a minute. Right. Yep. And, and I, w- I want everybody collective, just invite God into this space yes. as we talk about these things and we'll get to the things, we'll get to the scriptures, the quotes, the everything, but oh, like, yeah. just feel like where is your heart at right now? And that, I don't know. And especially I would say, you know, especially in our faith tradition, we, we've lost a lot of that because it's so there's such a strong tradition of the schedule and how, you know, what comes next and oh, time's up, you know, let's move on. But we really, as leaders, we have to take the role of stepping in and creating just that simple space of inviting God into it. Yes. And and talk about it, name it. Don't pretend that everything's back to normal. Yeah. See, that's also classic trauma behavior. The Mm. world is in denial now. Like, we think this whole thing is in our rearview mirror, but I want to go, well, then what's with all the hostility on the road? What's with the shootings? What's with the airline yeah. incidents? People are blowing <laughs> up on airplanes, mm-hmm. and they're getting kicked off. They're getting jailed, you know? And, and, and these are like, sort of like normal citizens, you know? Yeah. You Didn't go, you mention that in your recent podcast? Like, before the pandemic, there were maybe like 15 of these instances. Now there's hundreds every yeah, year. Yeah, 500 right? last year, and there's already <laughs> 360 this year, okay? Wow. Yeah, so people yeah. are not well. So let's just talk about it. Like, name it. You're in leadership. Mm-hmm. Name it and go, hey, here's my experience. I get home at night. I don't feel like I got a a lot left. So let me describe this in one more way here um, before we talk about some of the solutions. So I've been noticing what I'm calling the lethargy creep, Mm. the lethargy creep. So when your reserves are shot, it starts on the outside of your life. And you're like, I just don't have the energy to get to the gym tonight. I'm not going to go to the gym. And suddenly you realize it's been three months since you've been to the gym, right? (laughs) 
or I just don't, I don't have energy to go to that meeting. I think I'm going to skip that meeting this week. It starts on the outside, right? In things that look, uh, well, that's okay. Maybe you don't need to go to the gym, you know, but it starts moving in and you start going, man, I don't have, I don't have energy to make dinner tonight. Honey, can we just get takeout? Mm -hmm. It starts moving closer and closer, but here's the, here's the deadly threshold. I don't have the interest or the energy to pray. Hmm. And we begin to give up the things that connect us to Jesus. Right? You go, yeah. oh, I, I don't know, honey, let's not go to that tonight. Like it's, it gets to the epicenter of our life with God. And that's, that's like unplugging from the outlet. Like you, yeah. you got no more juice, you know, that, so that's what I, I want to protect above everything else. Let's make sure you protect the epicenter, everyone. Protect yeah. your heart and your life with God. Yeah. And and what I've appreciated so much about some of your other messages, you know, this concept of spiritual warfare, that there is a an adversarial force here who's coming for our hearts. And but it's such uh like you said, it's just this this creep. It's not that he's kicking down your door and you know, and, and there are instances, right? That the mother gets cancer or the father's suddenly taken in a car accident, like this traumatic adversity that just kind of blows up everything, your reality as, as you know it. But most likely it's sort of just in this creep where we don't see it as like we're being attacked because it just feels a little bit different than it did yesterday, right? Yes. But, so we have to be aware of this yes. happening. Yes, yes, yes. And it comes through disappointment mm. or, or something larger like tragedy. It comes in that and, and you wake up one morning and what the enemy whispers is, maybe I don't believe anymore. Mm. Maybe I don't believe. And you have you know the, the movement among young millennials now of deconstructing yeah. their faith right? right and and there are some things that maybe do need to be looked at you know but but the enemy is trying to yeah he's after our faith he's after our life with god it's not about the gym it's not about the barbecue ultimately it, he's trying to get us to give up on god yeah yeah man and it is it's just such this uh you see it happening and you want to do something about it. So then you re resort to some of those, oh, well, that's because we got to get that summer barbecue. Like everybody loved the barbecue at the church. So let's get that going. But again, it's going back to like, how can we help people as leaders just slow down and reconnect with God and and, and feel that lamp again, right? The, the yep. oil in our lamp. Exactly. Get your oil yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there is anything else as far as the the concept of, of Eden. I think you framed it well. These are just the things we do to sort of find relief and some, for some individuals they're they're sin, right? And for other individuals, it seems very innocent and just sort of, I'm, I'm, I need to just uh, scroll on, on my social media feed a little longer today. Cause I'm not ready to connect back with reality yeah. or, or my kids yeah. or, or whatever right. it is. Right. Yeah. Uh, anything else around the concept of Eden that we need to. Well, just notice here, here's when you can notice it. Notice when someone stands in the way, of your search for Eden. <laughs> Notice your reaction. It's really strong. Mm -hmm. Like somebody gets in the way and says, Hey, no, you know, we, honey, we just can't afford to, to get to the, to the beach this summer. We just can't do that. Notice your reaction, mm -hmm. right? If, if you're having strong visceral reactions to, I, I want this, I need this. Okay. Now you're, what you're doing is you're chasing Eden without God. Right. We want yeah. everything God has for us. Maybe, maybe he has the beach for you this summer. How wonderful. But notice your reaction when people get in the way of your Eden agenda. Like even something as simple as, honey, I, I think you might be having a little too much wine lately. And I noticed that, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and there's this inside, like, mm -hmm. don't mention that. Like, don't talk to me about that. You're like, oh, okay. Somebody is getting in the way of your Eden agenda. Yeah. And and even the, the little things of, you know, maybe my wife mentions to me like, hey, we're going to put our phones away tonight. Like, what do you mean we're going to put our phones yes. away? I'm fine. I don't got a problem. Yes. I can quit when I want to, you know? Yes. Like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or eating too much or yeah, a little too much chocolate or what? It, it's just all those little things. And all we're talking about, friends, is that 
your heart is desperate for replenishment right now. Mm-hmm. That's good. That everybody is. Where are you going? Where are you going to get that replenishment? Well, primarily in your relationship with Jesus. Right. Right. So let's let's shift there. Like as far as what that looks like, because it's so easy, especially for individuals who have a strong tradition in a in in, in Christ, Christian faith where they're like, you know what, John, I'm doing I'm doing the prayer thing. You know, every night I, I fall on my knees and I say my prayers and I, I, I'm in the Bible. I'm in, you know, I'm I'm reading, I'm I'm going to church and and then that's where some can sometimes feel like, and it doesn't seem to work for me, right? And but we're sort of on the superficial layer. So how would you encourage someone or how could a leader encourage someone to really understand how to rely on on Jesus? Yes. I think it will be help if uh, if you can if you can um, rearticulate for your for your people, why do we do those things? Mm-hmm. Because it's not, the actual prayers. It's, it's that in that we are reconnecting with God. It's not in the disciplines. It's not in fasting or in worship. Those things are all those practices are to get us back into union with Christ. The soul is healed through union with God. That's yeah. how it works. I am the vine. You are the branch, right? And, and so just to remind people, look, Maybe say your prayers on the porch this evening. Change the location. Change the way. Take a walk. Mm -hmm. Like to to kind of get people out of the rut and and to remind them the reason you're doing this (laughs) is to receive God, right? Is to be reconnected. I think people need to be reminded of that. Because when we fall into just, well, we just go to church, hon. That's what we do. We're, we're, yeah, no, this is, we, our family's done this all my life. This is what we do. Well, why? Why do we do this, right? Well, it, because it, it deepens our life in God. That's what we're after. I think people just need to be reminded of that. I think they yeah. need to, we need to recast the vision, right? Yeah. That that's what we're looking for. And then... You know, I mean, the scripture says, like, the heavens declare the glory of God. You know, the earth declares his splendor. God can come to us in many ways, through music, through fellowship, through quiet, right? Through a long walk. Like, there are many, many other ways he comes to us, and, and we want to encourage our people. So, remember what worked for you in the past. What did you used to do? that really helped you connect with God. Go get that back. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's so powerful. And, and I'm just, my mind goes to like, what a great question or, or a, a journey a leader could take with somebody as they're sitting down, maybe in this one-to-one scenario where the person's overwhelmed, they feel like they're questioning, they're maybe questioning their beliefs or whatnot to, to step back and say, what could we do differently? Not that let's c- completely try, maybe try the pagan lifestyle. See, yeah, no, right, that's right, not what, right. but we're no, saying like, we're not recommending Buddhism. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But to come back and say like, how, how did, have you typically prayed? And then how is that working for you now? What are some other ways to do? And just this, this concept of recasting the vision. One thing, this is a recent experience I had where, um, I was actually out with, um, at a camp with some friends and, you know, taking a prayerful moment. And I had this clear direction from God come to me saying, Kurt, I need you when you go running. I like to go running maybe three, four times a week. When you go running, I need you to take the ear earbuds out of your ears. And it was just this little thing. Right. And I thought, wow, okay, like I have something to talk to you about on your runs and I don't need anybody else jabbering in their ears type of thing. Right. And so I did this and it was such, now these runs are just such this prayerful experience of hearing my feet, you know, the, 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 the beat of my feet on the the pavement and then just feeling God with me there speaking yes. to me. And, and, yes. and that's sort of, that's, re-energize me. That's a new prayer that I do, right? And that's sure I still do the traditional, you know, kneel and and connect that way when I can, but I see these these daily or every other day runs as this this is a prayerful experience for me. Yes. Yeah. And that is that is the Psalms are filled with that, right? Yeah. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. David found God in nature. Yeah. 
right? And, and nature heals. Nature is, 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 is as, as contrasted to technology. Okay, so mm-hmm. that's like, here's a couple of the really simple things. When you get up in the morning, don't look at your phone. Right. First thing. Like, wait 10 minutes. Wait 20 minutes if you can. Like, don't look at the news. Because once you do that, you're in the matrix. Like, you, mm-hmm. you're already down the river. You know, here's the crisis. Here's the text you need to answer. Here's the email you forgot. You, you can create some margin in your morning that allows you the quiet for God. Mm-hmm. Right? You can do that. You can take that back, right? But, but most people, they literally take their iPhones or their, or their Androids or whatever into their bedroom at night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so you wake up in the morning and it's right there. And the impulse is check your text, right? Check your feet. And I'm, I'm suggesting that's disastrous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. Um, as far as uh, other ways to connect with God, you know, we, t- and we talked last time a little bit about this benevolent detachment, which you've, you've alluded to already in this, this conversation, but also you talk about this, the sort of this layered approach, the shallows, the midlands, and the depths. Yes. Uh, maybe, can you unpack that for us? And, yes, and frame that? yes, yes. Okay. So there's this beautiful prayer that Paul prays in the book of Ephesians where he, he says, I pray that your creator, the maker of heaven and earth, would strengthen you in your inmost being by his spirit who dwells within you. So you have an inmost being. Most people don't pay attention to it. <laughs> okay, mm. because we have a shallows, we have a midlands, and we have a depth. Everyone does. And the shallows is, you know, the song from high school that's going through your head right now, <laughs> and then the news that you heard about recently, and suddenly you're thinking about what's going on in Ethiopia. But then the next thing is, man, I really like tacos for lunch today. Where can we get some tacos? <laughs> it's all that. It's just that yeah. chatter. It, most people spend their entire life in the shallows. Okay, but you have, you have a deeper life. In the midlands of your life it is, are the cares of life. It's your concern for your aging parents. It's the education of your children. It's your, how your work's going. It's, whoa, where's the economy headed? It's, do we have enough in savings? Those are, those are more serious, right? Those are more weighty things. They're important things. They tend to be the things we pray about. You come from the shallows, you get out of there, you get down and pay attention a little bit. Whoa, you're suddenly aware of, man, I am really concerned for my kids. Okay, now you're in the Midlands. Mm -hmm. But even deeper than that, down in the depths of your being, what scriptures refer to as your heart, down in the depths of your being, your inmost being is where faith is. It's where love is. It's where hope is. It's where joy comes from. And, and down in the depths of our being, that actually is where Christ comes to dwell, right? Again, we're in that Ephesians 3 prayer, that Christ may fill your hearts mm. as you trust in Him. That's your inmost being. And so people say, oh, I, can't, I can't connect with God. Well, it's like, well, it's because you're in the shallows. Yeah. You're thinking about tacos and Ethiopia and that song <laughs> from high school. You know, like, <laughs> yes, you're an utterly distracted human being. And, and friends, the world that we live in right now is, is absolutely distracting. It's, it's just designed to keep you in the shallows. It's just fragmentation. Okay, see, but you can get out of that. So you go on your run mm-hmm. to get out of the shallows. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And so, some people turn on some music and some people, you know, sit on their back porch, whatever. Get out of the shallows. Start, start paying attention to what is deeper in you, because this is where your prayers are going to come from. And, that, and Christ himself, this is, the, this is the amazing thing. He comes to live in our hearts. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you're going to connect with God, you got to get out of the chaos and the shallows and the distractions. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in that sort of, the, we're in the shallows. I mean, that's sort of our default position. And then we think, oh, I gotta, I gotta do my nightly prayers. So we, we shift to nightly prayers, but we're still, <laughs> then the jab, the, the mental, you know, jabbers just gone from talking to yourself to talking to God about, about the tacos or about what, you know, just sort yes. of like whatever. And yes. okay, got that done. And now, but to again, create that space to go to the, the Midlands so yes. you can get to the, to the, the depth, right? Yep. That's yeah. right. Nice. And, and this is the interesting, because there is this 
feeling and I think it's a natural, you know, human reaction that when we're facing a problem or things seem out of sorts or, you know, I think of one instance where, you know, maybe I had a, just sort of a tough conversation with my wife. And so we turn to God in this in this prayer of like, just fix it, like change her heart or, you know, make this job promotion just happen. Because if this happens, then then we'll be to Eden finally. Right. Yeah. Um, and so what, what comes to mind as far as like sometimes we just look to Jesus or rely on him to fix something, which he'll fix all things. Right. It'll restore yes. all things as we learn. But in that yes. moment. Yes. Like, how do we just go to the depths rather than yes. expe- expect <clears throat> just a fix, you know, if I go there. Yep. Yeah. I just want to ask uh, everybody, how's that going? <laughs> Great therapist question, John. That's good. How's that working for you? Yeah. Right? How's that working for you? It, it, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It just makes you angry at God or frustrated or filled with shame because you don't have enough faith or whatever it mm-hmm. is. No, 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 no. The eyes of the Lord rove to and fro across the earth to strengthen the hearts of those whose hearts are fully given to him. Okay, yeah. Second Chronicles. So the, um, we begin by loving God before we ask him to fix things. Hmm. I, I love you. I love you, God. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my work. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank, thank you that I have my health or what, whatever. Wherever you can begin to express some gratitude. I love you. I love you, God. This opens us to God like nothing else. Nothing else will restore your connection with God like loving him. Mm. Just simple. Just a simple practice. I, literally, as you're driving down the road, I love you, God. I love you. Father, thank you. I love you. Yeah, because if it's all around fixing things, if it's all around results in prayer, we're going to be really, really frustrated. And and the beauty of the relationship, this is like any other relationship. The people who get Kurt, the people who get your spare time, the people who get your free time <laughs> are the people who love you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're your friends, your family, you know, the people who care. Right. The guy that just says, hey, Kurt, can I borrow your lawnmower? Hey, Kurt, you got 50 bucks you can loan me? Hey, Kurt, can I have your car this weekend? <laughs> you, don't, you don't actually want to be around that guy very much, you know? Yeah, yeah this, is, this is the nature of relationship. It begins with love. Let's get back to loving God. And from there, of course he intervenes. Of course he helps us. But it's out of the relationship of love. Yeah. And, and th- my mind goes to this, you know, we have this, I don't know how to, how to frame it, but sort of this tradition of, you know, I think of the scripture, if ye love me, keep my commandments. So we think if I'm going to love God, if I'm going to show that I, I love God, that means I got to do stuff. I've got to behave a certain way. But I think there's this, the, a deeper principle of really think of, of learning. How do we love God? It's not go out and make sure you have a pretty good day and, and keep it all those commandments, right? It's more of like, I just want to be grateful instead of running out and acting good or trying to qualify mm. for something. Mm. I just want to be present and, and love you and be grateful for what, yes. what you have. So, I mean, it seems yeah. almost primary that we, what do you mean? We have to learn how, of course I love God, you know, but there yeah. is sort of these, these uh, old habits that maybe we've misunderstood how to really love God. And so we have to start there. Yes, yes. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It, yeah. Is God the treasure of our lives? It, it, that, that is just, it's a huge disruptive question. And it's not meant to like be more guilt inducing, but it's a reorientation to say, wow, um, I, I think I actually love a whole lot more things than I love God. I think I love water skiing more than I love God. You know, like you start getting honest <laughs> yeah. and, and you go, oops. I, mm-hmm. I, I things my priorities have gotten out of whack, right? That I um, with C.S. Lewis, I saw that you had a, a, a reflection on C.S. Lewis re- oh, yeah. re- uh-huh. recently. Yeah, um, C.S. Lewis talked about the ordering of our loves, mm-hmm. the ordering of our loves to to be to be a 
good person is to love things as they ought to be loved. So you don't love your car more than you should. The guy across the street is always out there vacuuming his car. (laughs) <laughs> he is. I, he loves his car. I'm like, dude, there are more important things in the world than your new car. Okay, yeah. so you love things as they deserve to be loved. You love people more than you love money, right? You, mm-hmm. you, yeah, well, you love God more than you love anything else. And that brings all things of your life into order then. And then he is able to help you, right? I was thinking about Psalm 91 he says, um, because he loves me, I will rescue him. At the end of the psalm, because he loves me. It's not just because God's saying, well, I'm only going to help those people who really like me. Right, yeah. <laughs> he, he's saying, because you love me, I am able to help you. You hear the difference there? Because yeah. you love me, I am able to speak to you. I'm able to give you wisdom. I'm able to guide you. It, right. It, it yeah. works like that. Yeah. It's not because God has changed. It's because you've changed. You've yeah. put yourself into a pose you, of, of receiving that. Right? Exactly. You took the earbuds out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that uh-huh. you could hear him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's really, really helpful. I appreciate with, you know, as in this book, you talk about different prayers and approaches to prayers to really get into the to, to the depths, right? Yes. And, and in our faith tradition, for whatever reason, we don't have a strong tradition of saying, well, here's a prayer that I that I go through, you know, word for word, and it helps me. But that's one thing I've learned from you and, and you know, some of the apps you have, like the, the pause app and whatnot of actually taking a prayer. And again, it's not like you have to use that prayer every day and, and until it's you've squoze and all the the value out of it but maybe it gives you the words to actually begin articulating what you maybe do, can't articulate on your own right so uh, maybe unpack that concept of having a prayer that you can go to like a, a written prayer that maybe has come from somewhere else or maybe you've written it or whatever it is well try psalm 23 everybody mm-hmm. just say just use it it's beautiful the lord is my shepherd mm-hmm. i shall not want Right. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. You, you just say that out loud, even to yourself. Right. <laughs> it's going to change your day. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the, 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 we have all these beautiful scriptures that allow us to pray the scriptures. Yeah. Right there. It, it's it's um, like anything else in life, when you were learning to drive a car, when you were learning to ride a bike, when you learned to play tennis or to play the piano, someone showed you how to do it, mm-hmm. right? You copied them. And, and any athlete knows this. You want, you want to become a great athlete. You, you start copying the form and the technique of the great athletes, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, look what he does out of the blocks, or look how she holds that racket, or, you know. Um, this prayer is the same thing. We, we, we're not experts at this right out of the gate, <laughs> you know? We, let's, be, let's be a little more realistic here. We've yeah. we got some learning to do. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's sort of this de- descending to the depths, right? You may... You know, you may be in the, the shallows and it's like, I just need something to get me to the Midlands and, or I may need to, I, I can get to the Midlands pretty well, but I need something to push me in the depths and just yeah. saying these prayers or these Psalms, it's like suddenly that, you know, you're descending into yes. the, the depths where, yes. where Christ is waiting for you. Right? Yes, truly. And honestly, gang, just the simple, simple thing of, I love you, God. Yeah. I love you, God. That'll get you out of the chaos real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, you mentioned a little bit in our last conversation, but you've um, created some, some uh, you know, resources related to this resilience book in your in your pause app. So this yes. is a free app that yes. anybody can download. Yeah. Maybe just uh, tell us about it and, and this will maybe help people get to those depths. Exactly. Exactly. Because we all need help. So um, before the pandemic, and this is such a beautiful God story, we're not an app company. We don't build apps, but <laughs> yeah. we were moved to build this app called the One Minute Pause. Because I knew as a therapist, if I could just help people pause, for 60 seconds, twice a day, it'll change their life, okay? And then the pandemic rolled through, a quarter of a million people downloaded that app because it was so helpful to get out of the anxiety and the, you know, the loop in your head. And, and so the One Minute Pause app 
It's free on the App Store. Well, now the new installment, when you open it up, you see this thing called 30 Days to Resilient. It's a morning and evening reflection. So there's beautiful music, mm -hmm. there's prayer, but there's also quiet. <laughs> We've built exactly what we were talking about. It's very, very peaceful because there's a lot of space in it. it there's, it's not just talk. Mm -hmm. It's just like I'll ask a question and give you some room to just think about it for a moment. Or what do you need to let go of today? And then you have some time quiet to just sit there and go, oh, I need to let go of that exam. I need to let go of that meeting. So it's this lovely, it's about eight minutes in the morning, eight minutes in the evening. It's free. And um, we've got 10,000 people currently doing the, the 30 days oh, program great. right now. Yeah. yeah. You do it at your own pace. You just open it when you can. You listen when you can. It's really, really helpful. Yeah. And, and it makes me think of you know, when I, you know, I was a, when I was a young bishop and people would come in and, you know, lay their life problems on my desk and be like, fix it, you know, like, and sometimes it's like, okay, I've read the four scriptures that I always read. And uh, I've told them that one story that seems to help some people and I got nothing. Yes. So to sort of invite them to say, Hey, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how to approach the situation that you're faced with, but what, what if we took 30 days? And you just take these 30 days and, you know, download this simple app and just for 30 days, create these moments of pause and reflection and prayer. And then let's regroup and see what Jesus taught you, you know, because he's the one with the answers, not me. It will change their life. Yeah. 100% guarantee. I, I, I mean, honestly, it, it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, do you, and we got to get those that we lead to the depths, right? Yes. That, that's, we got to get them to the cross exactly. yes. and we got, they can't just yes. maintain in that jabber area and, and, and hope that we, yeah. you know, have yeah, some solution. He, to okay. You're naming something really, really important here. Let's, let's, let's put a highlighter on this. Okay. The, the pressure of leadership is that I have to come through for this person. Mm. That's, that's the subtle pressure we feel. And we want to, that's a, that's a earnest desire. I yep. want to help. Okay. But, but they don't need you. They need God. You're here to get them to God. And it takes all this pressure off you having to have like the brilliance or the latest, you know, you don't have a degree in therapy or you, you don't know where the economy is going, like all that stuff, right? That's right. You don't have to be the answer to their every problem. You, you are the person that helps them get back to God. Mm -hmm. And it, it changes leadership 100%. It's off your shoulders. Right. Yeah. And that's a huge weight that sometimes we burden ourselves with, right? Yes. Like we're not the answer. Thankfully, we don't have yes. to be the answer. Yes. We can just be a partner on this journey to get them to God and, yes. and, and offer some resources or, yes. you know, techniques or whatever just to get there. So, yeah. Um, what, one concept maybe I'll, I want to squeeze in here is just the re, you know, you, and you mentioned this early on and you've mentioned a lot, you know, in your, in your boot camps and, uh, and in, you know, your, your book Epic and, uh, waking the dead, but this concept of the larger story, mm. um, what, how could a leader understand this and maybe offer that concept to them to help them recalibrate or, or which will hopefully lead them to the depths of, of connecting with Jesus. Yeah, it's fascinating. If you watch any of the leading brands, so I, um, you take like Patagonia, the outdoor mm -hmm. clothing and gear company, you know, wildly successful, massive following, you know, people who love their stuff, like really love their stuff. Okay. Right. You get on their website. It, it doesn't start with the latest piece of gear. They tell you a story. Mm. Okay. They, they understand what people are looking for is to be part of something. Tell me a story, inspire me, make me feel like I'm part of something bigger than myself. Right. So Patty Gunn is talking about how our company is helping to reforest, you know, South America or whatever it is, you know, and you're like, Oh, that's so cool. That's bigger than me. I want to be personally as bigger than me. All of the leading companies are doing this now. They, they, it's on their packaging. It, it, it's just amazing to me that they've, they've latched onto this. Human beings want to be part of a story because God is telling a story. We live in a story. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's an amazing story, and it is huge, and it's important, and, and there are massive things at stake in this story to, to invite people to be in 
a larger story, the larger story. Mm-hmm. It, it is so reorienting. It gets them out of their petty little, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't get that promotion or yet yeah, I didn't go, whoa, 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 hang on. Let's, let's ask what God is up to. What's he up to in this, right? Let's, let's, let's get, let's get out of the chaos and let's get up into something bigger here. And this is the fascinating thing. I was reading the, the as a British novelist, Paul Kings North. He says all day, every day, human beings use stories to make sense of reality. Hmm. Okay. So when you, when you open the news, somebody's telling you a version of the world. They're not just giving you the news. They're giving you a narrative right? This is what's important. This is what's valuable. This is what you ought to be concerned about. So you open your email. Anywhere you go, people are trying to tell you what the story is. Well, the, the rescue is to get back into the story of God. Mm. Because like, I literally say this outside, out loud to myself. The story of God has been, is now, and always will be the story. <laughs> Like, right. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have to be reminded yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's powerful. I remember just a, a year or so ago, I had a, a good friend who was going through a divorce and just sort of, I mean, he was in the thick of it and just struggling. And, you know, he'd call me and just talk about the, this little thing and that little thing. And, and there was this moment where I said to him, I think you're the the next step for you you've got to reclaim that larger story again because you just can't you can't function in that space where you're just every little thing feels like an assault but when it's in the context of a larger story then it's like oh this is just part of that movie you know this is part of my movie yep. my story yep. that i'll get through this and there's there's hope on the horizon yeah that's right yeah it's like it's a road trip right yeah. if you are looking forward to where you're going You know, you're like, I know, I know, babe, it's six more hours, but think about it. When we're there, we're at your folks' cabin, we're at the lake, it's going to be great. It's perspective. Story gives you perspective. And the larger story, God's story, puts all of the suffering and all of, you know, the attacks and all of it, it puts it in perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really helpful, powerful stuff. Well, obviously, uh, you know, people should check out the book Resilient and, um, you know, they, they can really do a deep dive in a lot of these concepts we're talking. Obviously, they can find it uh, the, the book on online, but any other resource if people want to, uh, you know, connect with this message in the book? Yeah. Well, if you, if you enjoy podcasts, uh, the Wild at Heart podcast, we've been talking about these things all spring yeah. and how do we replenish the soul and how do we restore our reserves? How do you, how do you do that now? And so we're, we're trying to offer people some real guidance every week. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. And I highly recommend, love the book. I loved reading it and it sort of, you know, I felt like I was sort of a good spot, you know, and, and then it's going through this, God sort of pointed out, Hey, here's some places to tune up or to reconsider. And maybe you're, you're only in the Midlands at, at times. I, I need you in the depths and uh, it's really powerful stuff. Um, John, I'm going to maybe put you on the spot and hopefully you're okay with this, but would you, I just so much appreciate your approach to prayer. Uh, would you mind just praying for with us and, and yeah. for us and, and uh, yes. helping us connect with, with God? Yes. Yeah. That Let's pray together that prayer from Ephesians. Okay. So what we pray is, Father, my Father, the creator of heaven and earth, I need you to strengthen me in my inmost being. My reserves are shot. I need I need you. And so, Father of all creation, by your Spirit, would you strengthen me in my inmost being, restore our union. And and then the next part of the prayer, Paul says, so that Jesus would be filling my heart. I pray that Jesus would fill my heart as you strengthen me, God from all that we've been through. Strengthen us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
that concludes this episode of the Leading Saints podcast. We'd love to hear from you about your questions or thoughts or comments. You can either leave a comment on the uh, post related to this episode at leadingsaints.org or go to leadingsaints.org slash contact and send us your perspective or questions. If there's other episodes or topics you'd like to hear on the Leading Saints podcast, go to leadingsaints.org slash contact and share with us the information there. And we would love for you to share this with any individual you think this would apply to, especially maybe individuals in your ward council or other leaders that you may know who would really appreciate the perspectives that we discussed. And remember, to review the Mentally Healthy Saints Library, click the link in the show notes or go to leadingsaints.org slash 14. as a result of the position of leadership which was imposed upon us by the God of heaven who brought forth a restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when the declaration was made concerning the own and only true and living church upon the face of the earth, we were immediately put in a position of loneliness. The loneliness of leadership from which we cannot shrink nor run away and to which we must face up with boldness and courage and ability.